I mean, you started a film career, and then you, you almost blew it at the very oh, early yeah. stage. Sure, I mean, it's what, a, you, what happened? Well, when you're a young fella, and you, you're out there, and, you know, um, there's a lot of people who want to get around you, and they all got a bunch of interesting new games to play, you know. <laughs> and uh, it's the devil knocking at your door, you know. It's like, uh, and, of course, you think, well, you know, hey, I was a, you know, what, what are you going to do, not do it? Uh, I suppose you could not do it. But I wasn't that kind of person, you know. I have, a, I have an alter ego in me called Bjorn. <laughs> Bjorn? Bjorn. Uh -huh. Yes, yeah. And, um, who, who is Bjorn? Bjorn is just uh, the kind of, like, you know, pillaging sort of Viking. In it. <laughs> I think he's in you, too. You have an S-O-N on the end of your name, right? <laughs> Yeah, he's uh, so way back in the dark ages somewhere. I mean, the sins of the father visited on. I know that something is wrong there. But uh, <laughs> Bjorn is a, um, you know, he's, he's an axe murderer. He gets off a boat and <laughs> chops up convents, you know. <laughs> that's, you know, and that, that, that's, that's there. That's in all of us, you know, the wild man kind of, especially in your 20s. I mean, my gosh, you got so much energy. So, so, <laughs> so Bjorn's still there. Bjorn's there, but I've, I've done a lot of damage to him. <laughs> Not only that, but I've managed to subdue him, uh, dig a shallow grave in my imagination, insert him in the grave, and every now and then you just got to go out the backyard, get a few shovels full of dirt, throw it on top and tamp it down just to keep it. Because I tell you, I don't want to be Bjorn again. Or born again. <laughs> <laughs>drinks later and I was in the back of a police car wailing so so how drunk were you it's not a question of how drunk you are or you you're impaired um, uh, your uh, judgment is impaired enough to do insane things like try and drive I've heard people say you know I am a angry drunk fill in the blank I am a happy drunk until I snap for no reason and just turn where does this anger come from? I have no idea. <laughs> Just I've been angry all my life. Um, uh, and I try not to have it manifest itself, you know. You, you try and keep a lock on it. And it really isn't. It's real back there someplace. And, uh, you know, I've talked to people about that. Like, Where is it coming from? This anger? So I'm kind of a work in progress right now. So. Yeah. I've apologized more than anyone I know, so it's getting old. And, uh, How long's your list oh. of apologies necessary? Oh, huge. For my whole life. How did you tell your wife? I just told her, you know, straight out. Slipped again, yeah. And um, she was like, of course, you know, she doesn't like that. Uh, so, but she was, you know, gracious, uh, compassionate. Her name is Robin. They have been married 26 years and have seven children. You said once that she gets the medals. Yeah, Because true. she is the one who hopes. Yeah. She hopes she bears the brunt. And uh, it's no different this time, so. He says the torment is every time that you relapse, it's harder to fight your way back. The risk of everything, life, limb, family, um... is not enough to keep you from it. That's the, that's the hell of it. You are indefensible against it. That if your nature is you will sacrifice anything. So you must keep that under arrest in a sense, but you cannot do it of yourself. And people can help, yeah, but it's God. You got to go there. You got to do it, and or you won't survive. That's all there is to it, because you're dealing with a, a sort of um, a malady of the soul, uh, an obsession of the mind, and a physical allergy. And some people need a big tap on the shoulder. In my case, public humiliation on a global scale 
it has to it has to have some kind of place somewhere and you have to ask where is it coming from where is it coming from actually i asked mel to present uh this award to me for a reason because when i couldn't get sober he told me not to give up hope and he urged me to find my faith didn't have to be his or anyone else's as long as it was rooted in forgiveness and i couldn't get hired so he cast me in the lead of a movie that was actually developed for him and he kept a roof over my head and he kept food on the table and most importantly he said that if i accepted responsibility for my wrongdoings and if i embraced that part of my soul that was ugly uh, hugging the cactus he calls it he said that if i hugged the cactus long enough i'd become a man of some humility and that my life would take on a new meaning and I did, and it worked. Um, all he asked in return was that uh, someday I help the next guy in some small way. Uh, it's reasonable to assume that at the time he didn't imagine the next guy would be him. <laughs> or that someday was tonight. So anyway, on this special occasion, and in light of the recent holidays, including Columbus Day, I humbly ask that you join me, unless you are completely without sin, in which case you picked the wrong f***ing industry, <laughs> in forgiving my friend his trespasses, offering him the same clean slate you have me, and allowing him to continue his great and ongoing contribution to our collective art without shame. He's hugged the cactus long enough. <laughs>